everyone, it's Lauren from Single Barrel Soaps and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I have my best friend Beth here and she's visiting from Boston and I figured while she's here, while kiddos are napping and at school, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna make soap. Beth picked a fragrance oil. She picked Peach Prosecco from Brambleberry. So good, perfect. We picked really great peachy, pink, golden colors to go with it. Do the design, um, we're gonna be recording it. Beth's gonna be asking me some questions, just things that I may miss out explaining on. So when you hear a voice on the videos, it's not mine, it's not my kids being crazy for once, it's Beth. So we hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching. So I'm starting out with my bucket of oils and Beth actually asked me, what, what oils, like what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So, not with the Jersey accent though, that's pure <laughs> me. <laughs> So I have in here, I have my olive oil, avocado oil, rice bran oil, castor oil, and then shea butter and cocoa butter and coconut oil all melted together. And then I'm going to add my lime water solution. They're all within 10 degrees of each other. Why do they need to be close together in temperature? So if you have a big difference in temperature, your soap can seize up really fast, move a lot faster. So a lot of times if that happens, it's a fragrance oil. But if your oils and butters and lye are too far away from each other, that can also affect it. So it pretty much just takes out another factor that could mess up your soap. So I'm going to burp my stick blender means I'm tapping it on the bottom to get the bubbles out and I'm gonna start mixing. Come on. Come closer. How do you know how long to use for? Go ahead. How do you know how long to use the blender for? So I look at it and what I'm going for now is just for the lye to kind of connect with all the butter so it won't separate out. Like if you look on here it's not separating. It's just one thing. And then I will mix it to a thicker texture once I add the colors. I don't want it to get too thick too fast. So I'm gonna take the stick blender out, put that to the side, yay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna split it out. Now Beth picked four colors. So we'll have a base color and then we have three other ones and we're gonna use a hanger tool to make a swirl. So I'm just gonna guesstimate pretty much equal portions. One. Do you ever make more of one color? Than oh yes. Yeah. yeah, in fact, if you want more of one of the colors, then we can do that. Do you want to do that? <laughs> that was a no. She said no. She's like, no, I, I don't want to do that now. <laughs> don't make more, don't put more pressure on me. Don't make me make exact decisions. <laughs> no. So I'm cleaning up. I like always, always make a mess. It's ridiculous. I like it. Clean nature. <laughs> That's how yeah. I am that me normally, you know that. All right, so the base color, we're gonna be using Champagne by Mad Micah's. That's what we decided in our notes, right? Yep. Yeah. Yay! It's perfect for the peach bellini. Mm-hmm. And this has a really, really good white texture, but also a little hint of gold. So that's what we're going with was the little touches of gold. How much do you, how do you know how much of the color to add? So I pretty much eyeball it. I have actually measured it out before, which is great that my eyeballing was correct, but you usually want about one half, tablesp one half tablespoon to one tablespoon, but it really depends on the manufacturer. Um, so you always wanna check out the color of the website and they'll tell you how much per pound of oil to use. And then next we're gonna do Always a Bridesmaid by Mad Micah's. And most of them, <laughs> Beth is dying. Um, Perfect for me, as always, the bridesmaid. I love it. I was one of her bridesmaids. You're a maid of honor. I know. Yeah. And so I'm gonna add, I'm gonna see how dark this gets and see if Beth likes it and I may add more. So we'll see. In the middle, we're doing Shimmer Gold Mica Powder from Nurture. What was that? What did we say the other night? 14 years ago. I've been married for 14 years. Yeah. It's insane. And don't worry, she let me wear a good dress. It was not that. <laughs> Do you even still have it? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Memories, city. Memories. Oh, by the way, you're going to get sparkles all over because that's what happens. I'm okay, <laughs> Next, we have Summer Crush Mica by Nurture. <laughs> and this one, we're going to. Yeah, Ooh, so you that can one's see. Pretty. I know, you can see like the gold tone. So I think we picked a pretty good palette there. I'm awesome at this. <laughs> and next, I'm gonna mix it up from lightest colors first to darkest. So I'll move those out of the way. 
and I will speed this part up a little bit unless we see something fun and then I'll slow it down. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty good. So this one, I am going to pour a bit of the fragrance oil in. Brambleberry's fragrances, I mean, pretty much across the board behave wonderfully and they leave notes that accelerate so it makes it too thick. This one doesn't. I made cupcakes with this, cupcakes soap with this, and it took forever to set up. So I feel pretty comfortable putting some of this in and stick blending it. I just don't want to stick blend it after I go through the pinks because we want this one to be like the creamy white. Now watch, this is gonna be soap on a stick. <laughs> because I said this and I was confident. Like, see, so it's not even really getting the full trace. You can see a little bit of the trail. So if it was a thick trace, it would look like pudding. We don't want that okay. for our design. We don't want that so at all. So it's better to add the fragrance oils close to the end. Yes, okay. because some of them, if they're, you know, gonna mess up, you wanna do it closer to pour. Okay. All right, so I'm tapping this. <laughs> pretty confident so I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this in. I don't it's never good when I'm confident like this. Mm -mm. There we go because I mean I do want it to thicken up I don't want the colors to all run together. Oh that's a good tip because if it's too thin it'll all run together and mm -hmm. you won't have as good of a design. No and because these guys are pretty close so I don't want them to run together. And then I'll scrape all the edges with the spatula before I pour. Mm -hmm. All right. Boom. <laughs> and I'll pour the gold in between these two to kind of differentiate the two. Yeah. Nice. And that's it. Does the fragrance, the color of the fragrance oil ever affect the colors that you put in? Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. And it's not necessarily the color of the fragrance oil, it's what's in it. So a lot of the vanilla smells that you love have vanillin in them, so they'll turn dark brown. Okay. See, okay, so this hasn't really thickened up a lot. So that's awesome. I'm getting another spatula real quick. So I can scrape off my stick blender. You guys should all see this room. <laughs> Extremely well organized and beautiful. I don't want to sleep in here. What I say? <laughs> She always threatens that. She's like, I'm just gonna sleep in the soap room. I'm like, she yeah, thinks I'm kidding. You might have a headache by the end. I gotta tell you, it's a little overpowering in here sometimes. It smells amazing. <laughs> so I'm just scraping the edges to make sure there's no like clumps of color anywhere. I'll pull these to the side, get the messed up random. I don't know if that was wrong. All right. Now I'm just gonna center this on here. Let's see how I wanna pour it. I'm gonna pour it like, here we go centering on the camera angle. There. Now I'm gonna pour the majority of the champagne colored one for the base. Make sure it's centered. So it's a really, really like almost pretty perfect texture. Yeah. See a lot of Brambleberry fragrances, they're just, they're amazing to work with. You can really get the intricate swirls and designs because they give you a lot of time. All right, so I'm just saving a little bit on the white to go on top. All right, and now I'm gonna do, which one, which pink do you wanna do? I think we do the lighter pink. The lighter pink, all right. It's such a pretty rose color, I, I love know. that. So pretty. So now I'm just gonna go down one side, loop, and then back up. And I think I can get two passes for each. So next I'm gonna do the gold. Oh, cause it's gonna separate it a little mm -hmm. bit, the two pinks, cool. Mostly down the middle and then up the side. And you can see, I don't know if you can kind of see them Mm -hmm. moving. So even as I pour it, it makes a design. So I could technically leave the design like that, but we're going to use the hanger tool. We're just going to go one side. See this is getting a little thicker, mm -hmm. which is good. And then we'll do it again. I'm going to start from the other edge of the side, just, you know, mm -hmm. for fun. Mm -hmm. Pouring almost everything in on this pass. This little bit I'll leave for the top. I can't wait to see the top design. I'm excited. If it works how I want it to, it should be pretty good. That's always the little <laughs> thing. If it works how I planned. Fill it right to the top. Yeah, and I'm hoping 
So when I'm done pouring, you can see my table is not straight. Can you see that? That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, one side is way higher than the other. And if I have extra, I can pour it in a little mold. That's fine. So now it's time for the hanger tool. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it down, and I'm kinda gonna go back and forth a little bit. So I'm gonna dip it down, and I measured this already earlier today when we were setting stuff up. So like you're making waves almost? Yeah, and I'm not going down all the way. I'm kinda going midway. Cause so that you, the base color stays the same. Yeah, you said you like the kind of the white and then the yeah. color sitting on it. So that's what I'm going for. And I'm wearing gloves, so I can do this. You would not do this without gloves. Because the soap wood is pretty caustic at the moment. And then I'm just bending it over so it's easier for me to put in my cleanup pile. All right, now. It smells so good. <laughs> it really does. I'm gonna tap it down a little bit. To get rid of air bubbles? Mm -hmm. That's okay. exactly it. And then run that. So I'm gonna let this sit for a minute um, because when I add the color layers on top, I don't want it to sink the bottom. Okay. So we will leave this on top. You and I can chat for a minute. I'm gonna look for another mold. Cause I know there's gonna be extra. So you know what? We're gonna make a peach bellini crab. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. Um, here we go. I think it should be enough for just a single one. Yep. Or you do have an air bubble right on top. Oh yeah, do you see them coming up? Oh, okay, so that has happened. Yeah, and I can tap it down again, but that's from, it just works its way. And honestly, air bubbles aren't a big thing. It's more of a um, aesthetic appeal. Mm -hmm. So will the air bubbles, if you make an intricate pattern on the top, the air bubbles will go away? So it's a cup, okay if a couple pop up while this it's is It's like happening. the ones on the top mm -hmm. go away? Yes, because I am actually, what I'm planning for the top is I'm gonna do a nice pass of each color. I'm gonna do a little um, glitter line and then I'm using a skewer to make a design. Oh, awesome. So it I should look really glitter. nice. And I think, I'm pretty, excuse me, pretty sure it's set up enough. So I'm just gonna take a little bit my special, there we go. There we go. So I'm just gonna take a tiny bit and do this. And with the other ones, it'll be easier because they actually have the pouring spout on them. So it doesn't have to be, because you're making the design with the stick later, it doesn't have to be perfect when you're putting no, it No, 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 no. You just want to make sure it's pretty much even, so each piece has about the same amount. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so that's all. And then I'm going to scrape this out into my little, little crabby mold. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll give it more time for the other stuff to set up. I'm so excited. <laughs> this crab is awesome. Here in Maryland. Of course. Yeah, so I grew up... Beth is from, originally from Maine, so I grew up every year, every summer and every winter, we go up to Maine, but especially during the summer, we get lobsters, because that's what you do. So us as kids, we would have the lobsters, our parents get them live from, usually from the dock, I don't even think from like a store, mm -hmm. and then the kids would come, we'd have races with them, mm -hmm. and we go outside we and play. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'd go outside and play, and we'd come in, and there was food. Yeah. And I, I still honestly don't think I've ever, and I will never, actually see them cook them. And I am such a press. I've never even shelled my own lobster. I would always have, like, our brothers do it, um, and pretty much what are our cousins do it for me. Someone will do it. It's true. Someone would always do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I learned today, though, is that shucking or de-shelling crabs yes. is much different than lobsters, oh. <laughs> hence why you have the special crab soap. <laughs> yeah, she looked at me, she's like, wait, why, why do you need cleanup soap after crabs? And I was like, oh, oh yeah, it's messy, it gets everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I did not know. Yeah. So actually, I didn't pour that in there, so let's pour this in here. And I'm going to put it up a little high so it goes through. That's so cool. And I'll scrape that out. And I'll make a mess as usual, seriously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's such a good color. It, I really, really like these. I, I don't think I've used this one lately. Do colors typically dry darker than they appear when they look wet? It depends. It really depends on the color. Um, sometimes they're gonna look exact, can you see that it's got thicker? Mm -hmm. It's gonna look exactly the same, um, but you never know. Like greens, 
oh, they're rough. If you're not used to a green the first time you see it, you're like, oh my God, I didn't want this color. No, <laughs> I don't want it to look like baby puke. That is not good. <laughs> but then it morphs back once the soap goes through this potification process and actually turns into soap. All right, so I'm gonna take a little break from this dude. I'm gonna clean up and then we're gonna spray some glitter down. Do you wanna spray the glitter? Yeah. yeah. So what color do you think should have the, do you want to do it down the middle? Yeah. So basically you're just gonna do this. Oh, <gasps> that was pretty. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I know, I'm sorry. It might, it's fine. Sven is not wearing gloves, but she's not touching any of the soap. She's literally just spraying glitter. Isn't that fun? It's amazing. <laughs> I feel like I'm not doing as good of a job as I should. No, you're doing great. We always want extra gold, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least I do. All the glitter. Get that going. Nice. Excuse my OCD me. No, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm the same way. I thought you'd kill me if I picked the sprayer up to fix it. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> no, 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 you got everything. All right. I love the glitter. So on now I'm going to tap it down a little bit. And then we're just going to go. That's so pretty. <laughs> Just back and oh, forth, and I'm not the going. Gold. Huh? The glitter gold. Yeah. Is so pretty. So it kind of goes through everything, and I'm not going down very far. Like, mm. so it's just for the top. Now, the hardest it's crazy thing. See how a dowel can change the look of the top of the soap so much. So I have problems. Now I just want to keep messing with it. Like that's the hardest thing for me is just stopping. Like I just want to keep going. That's okay. That's why so. I love your soap. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing, I'm cleaning up the edges now. Um, and then I'll take a paper, t paper towel and get those. But it'll be easier when I unmold to clean it up. All right, what do you think? You happy with that? That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I am so excited <laughs> for this soap. You, none of you can have it. It's all coming <laughs> she's, to my house. <laughs> when we first talked about it, she's like, um, I, I don't think I can use a whole loaf of soap. I was like, no, dude, you're just inspiring it and I'll ship you a bar. Like, I mean, you can have it if you want. But no, it's beautiful. Yeah, that would be like super pretty for like a girl's baby shower, like a girl baby shower yeah. or something like that. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna clean up and then I will bring you guys in for a nice close up of the top. Hi everyone, we are back 24 hours later to unmold our peach Bellini soap. And this is scented with um, peach Prosecco from Brambleberry, but we keep calling it peach Bellini, so we're gonna go with that name. And Beth is still here with me, and I'm really excited we were able to time this right so she was able to see the cut and everything while she was still visiting. Right, are you excited? I'm super excited. <laughs> Man down. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but I think it's pretty nice. I love the gold. Know, that was not going to slide down. So I'm going to pull it out this way. All right, and the colors did mute a little bit, at least on top, but I still think they look pretty dang awesome. And I'm going to see, I did um, cover it and insulate it to force gel phase. Um, so hopefully in the gel phase is when the soap actually heats up higher and it can make colors more vibrant. It can also cause cracking on top, um, volcanoes and things like that. <laughs> yeah, soap volcanoes are great. <laughs> um, but I was pretty confident with this fragrance oil, it wasn't gonna get too hot and I always check on them. So I'm gonna go grab a knife to clean this up because it's easier to clean it up in a loaf than each bar at a time. So what do you think? So do you do gel phase for, do you try to speed up gel phase for all of your soaps or unless you're not trying to do it quickly? I do for every soap except for my beer, my bourbon, um, any soaps that have a high amount of sugar in them. I don't, I will just lightly, I won't insulate them. Like I'll put a lid on them, but not a towel, not that because then you're definitely going to get cracking. It's going to speed up. The amount of sugar is what makes yeah, that difference. The added sugar, added sugar in soap is great because it can make more bubbles, um, which is always a good thing to have in soap, but it can cause overheating pretty bad. So you have to be really careful when you work with it. Okay. Well, let's just scrape that off. And it's, this is still slightly soft, but that bad that you're, it's just stuck. There we go. It looks pretty even from the sides. You can see the different colors coming through. Yay! And it looks great. It really smells good. It does. Yeah. All right, let's get this out of the way. And then 
What do you do with all these soap traps? These ones I honestly just get rid of um, unless I want to put them into a ball and kind of save those. <laughs> I save a lot of my stuff, but these little ones are still pretty tacky and sometimes not worth it. That can just go right in the garbage. The garbage bag's right over there. But I mean, I'm now gonna make a little soap ball out of these because now I feel bad wasting. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, you know I'll use that soap ball. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we had the leftovers that we poured in other molds and I was like, Beth's like, what are you gonna do with them? I was like, uh, I'm gonna ship them to you when they cure. <laughs> like, you're getting them. So this is my multi-bar cutter. One of the best investments I made when I started. Actually, my brother bought me one. Let's see what I want to do. Was this one of your first big investments? Yeah. Is it kind of integral to like cutting I uniformly? Can't, I can't cut straight. I literally, it's, it's almost horrifying. All right, so I'm gonna, hmm. Um, so what I'm trying to figure out is I, I wanna have more bars or samples. So what I can do is kind of push this over. I'm gonna do samples because I don't want one wonky size bar. All right, so these are gonna be good size samples, but let's press this down. See, and it's still a little soft, it's moving, but it is quite a strength. <laughs> it's your workout for the day. It is, Ooh. oh. I love that a what do you like, think? lighter rose it turned into an actual yeah. peach color. All right, I'm gonna get one from the middle. I feel like it was perfect. Oh, that's so It's pretty. almost like a light rainbow. Yeah. With the gold and the shimmer. I really like the champagne um, white uh, do you like it? And see, lot. this was, you see the swirls that I used from the hanger tool? Yeah. Too. Let's do a little close up up there. I still, I love the top. So I'm just going to keep laying these out here. And as I pick them up, I kind of clean that little bit. So it's less I have to clean up later. Oh, I like this one. Yeah. Look at that. We feel really lucky. Yeah, but see, look at how different. Really <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But look at how different the colors turn from even the top. But these are definitely brighter because we did gel yeah, them. Yeah, they are. So, but you never know, honestly, what the color is going to look like because the micas can look completely different in the container versus how they look out. So what I'm doing is I'm lining these up. So I'll stamp them so they're all at the pink here. So I try to keep it even like that. Do you ever do test batches to see what the colors will look like when you're done? I don't do that so much anymore. I did do it in the beginning. Um, and so you can see the gold that we have in there. Right now, I know most of my colors. Reds do get tricky. No, see, I'm lying. I did. Like for my train soap, I will show you on the curing rack all the ones that didn't turn out right. <laughs> and I went back to the drawing board because I decided to uh, try some new stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. I really love these. I, I love, love the gold. I know. The gold is beautiful. So good. And then, you know what, I will. I'm going to end up moving these because I'm going to stamp them film look at that I, but I, I'm really glad we did the hanger swirl with this I think it looks really really good yeah and you can see the gold in there can you see the oh, gold oh you can you can see it mixed through yeah so that's like a lot of the some metallics they don't really show through you have to use a huge amount but these are always really really good like the nurture and mad micas you can see the shimmer and I love it and the tops so I'm gonna keep pulling these out and then I will be back when it's time to stamp them. The colors are and we're back and we're gonna stamp and I'm sorry my kids are rowdy in the background so you'll probably hear that noise too. But I'm gonna spray my stamp with rubbing alcohol and that prevents sticking. And I always test on my little sample soaps first because it doesn't really matter if they get um, messed up. So they're a good way to test how hard, how much pressure I should use in the actual bars. Okay, and then I take my stamp and I spray it with rubbing alcohol and then I gently press down and go in a little bit of circle, a circular motion, and my son's going to come in. Oh my god. And I'm just going to keep going. So. I love your stamp. I did, That's another one of the first things I did to kind of when you're looking at my pictures, just a way of almost copywriting it. Mm -hmm. So it can be this is single barrel and you know that and then if someone throws away Their soap label they can still look at the soap and be like oh there's a barrel on it Maybe something to do with the barrel <laughs> But here is a close-up 
Hi guys, I hope you really enjoyed that video. It was a little nerve wracking to get in front of the camera, but I really liked it and it was awesome having the support and encouragement of Beth here. Yeah. One of honestly my biggest supporters since I started the company. You have been. I love obviously. it. <laughs> and she's always awesome. Whenever we talk, she's like, well, how are single things going with Single Barrel? It's awesome. But yes. we hope you like this soap that came mm -hmm. out. It is now gonna hit the curing racks and it's gonna take about four weeks before I can ship it up to you. <laughs> So long. <laughs> but we love how it turned out and I think the top yeah the sparkly gold on it is my favorite part by far yeah yeah I love it yeah. I think it's great and get a little yeah it does smell amazing <laughs> it really <laughs> does <laughs> I want to lie it is it's good so thank you so yeah. much for coming on and I hope you guys yes. enjoyed this please let me know what you think down below and if I should do this again thanks guys mm -hmm. and have a great day